Hello everyone. So in this brief presentation, I will talk about 3D printing and orthodontics and how we can benefit from this technology in our practice. This will be uh, the main uh, outline of our presentation today. And we all know that 3D printing is part of the CAD CAM technology. So of course, CAD CAM stands for Computer Aided Design and Computer Aided Manufacturing. And basically it uses the power of computers to be able to design anything virtually and then be able to manufacture this design into a physical object. So we have two ways of manufacturing, additive manufacturing and subtractive manufacturing. And basically additive manufacturing is building the object from scratch, building it layer by layer. However, in subtractive manufacturing we have a piece uh, or a block of a material, for example, a ceramic material, and we just subtract from the material until the desired shape is obtained. So 3D printing is another name for additive manufacturing. And as you can see in this diagram, it's building the object layer by layer until we have the final object in our hands. You can use 3D printing in all sorts of applications. Some researchers even started 3D printing organs where they can 3D print a scaffold of the shape of the organ and then cells invade this scaffold. Even food can be 3D printed. Let's talk a little bit about the types of 3D printing used in orthodontics. So there are many types of additive manufacturing technologies. However, in dentistry, we use few of them. So the main types of um, additive manufacturing technologies that we use, especially in orthodontics, are resin 3D printers, which uses these kind of technologies, and the FDM printers, which is fusion deposition modeling. And I'll talk about these types in the coming slides. So the idea of a resin 3D printer is that we have a tank that's filled with resin, and then we have a light source that selectively cures this resin. And this light source could be a projector or a screen, or could be laser, which cures the resin layer by layer. And of course, we have this plate, which is initially is lowered into the resin, and it goes up layer by layer until we have our object. There is a wide range of resin materials that can be used, each with its own characteristics. Uh, some are clear, some are uh, more flexible than others, so each with its own uh, application and characteristics. So this is another diagram that explains how resin 3D printers work. So as we said before, we have a source of light. In this case, we have a projector that projects uh, the light on uncured resin. And of course, this light that's projected corresponds to one layer of the object. So this uh, pattern of light changes um, depending on which layer we are creating. So let's talk a little bit about uh, FDM printers. And here we have the spool filament that we are going to use. And of course we have the bed that uh, we will print on. And this filament is fed through the extruder and uh, the hot end melts this filament and uh, it deposits this material on the bed. Similar to resin 3D printers, we have multiple FDM materials that can be used. The most well-known FDM material is PLA because it's actually biocompatible and biodegradable. It's actually uh, uh, polylactic acid. And we have ABS, we have some flexible materials, uh, we have PETG, uh, we have materials that uh, simulate like, uh, looks like wood. Uh, so there are so many FDM materials that can be used uh, with FDM 3D printers. So this is another diagram that shows uh, how FDM printers work. So again, we have the uh, spool of filament, whatever the material we are using, which is fed into the extruder and to the hot end, which melts this filament and it, um, the filament comes out from the nozzle uh, and everything, of course, is controlled. The amount of extrusion, uh, where to put the material. Of course, it depends on uh, the, the object that we are creating. So everything is controlled in the X, Y, and Z coordinates. This is another 3D printing technology. It's called Selective Laser Sintering or SLS. And this technology is the one used for 3D printing metals, for example. And the first time I used 3D printers, I actually used this kind of technology to create this 3D printed retainer, which was not metal, of course, but it was a material called polyamide that was in 2010. And the idea of SLS is that there is a laser that fuses the powder particles together. So instead of having a light source that cures resin, in this technology we have a laser that centers or fuses the powder particles together. So we lay down uh, metal particles, for example, on the bed, and the laser fuses or centers these particles, and then another layer of particles is added, and the process is repeated until we have the whole object. So whatever technology that we are using, there are some common steps for 3D printing. 
So the first thing, of course, is we need to obtain the model that we need to 3D print. So we either design it from scratch, or we can get our 3D model from an intra order scanner, for example. And this model has to be in an STL format. And then we prepare and do some modifications or editing uh, to the 3D model if needed. And then we slice the model, and I'll show you what's meant by slicing the model. And do some, uh, uh, and then we adjust some settings before we send our object to the 3D printer. And finally, we do some post-processing, and this this uh, step differs a little bit from one technology to another. So here we have our model. In this case, we have a dental model, and we can prepare this model for 3D printing. Uh, for example, we can cut or remove the base if we don't need the base to um, save some 3D printing material. And then we send our model to uh, the slicer software. So this is a slicer software for an FDM printer. And of course, we can do some basic editing. And then we have all these settings that I'm not going to talk about now, but let's slice our object. And what slicing does is it creates the layers that will be 3D printed. So when we preview our model, we can see the slices or the layers that's, uh, that's what I meant by building the object layer by layer. So these are the layers that will be 3D printed to have our final object. The slicer also creates what is called a G-code. So the G-code is a set of instructions that is sent to the 3D printer, which tells it what to do exactly. Now, after the 3D model is 3D printed, we go to the next step, which is the post-processing step, which is an essential step, especially for resin 3D printers. So any resin 3D printed model needs to go through what is called a wash and cure post-processing. And this means that the model has to be washed first carefully using isopropyl alcohol, and this to remove any uncured resin on the model. And then the model is put into a UV chamber to be fully cured. Now some companies like any cubic, for example, provides these kind of devices that can wash and cure the, the final object. The great advantage of FDM 3D printers is that the model doesn't need any post-processing. However, FDM printers usually have lower resolution than resin 3D printers. Of course, there are multiple differences between resin 3D printers and FDM printers, and this table summarizes differences between them, and uh, in my opinion, they both complete each other. So some uh, models are better printed using resin 3D printers, and I think other things like, for example, especially in surgical cases uh, where they need uh, surgical guides, for example, or they want to uh, uh, they need a uh, mandible to be 3D printed. This is more suitable for FDM printers. So there is no doubt that 3D printing changed how we practice orthodontics right now. It saves so much time that we don't have to send everything to the lab. We can create our own retainers and in-house aligners, so it's very cost-effective on the long term. And we can 3D print our own appliances, even if it's a totally new design. However, the greatest strength for 3D printing in general, in my opinion, is customization. This is where 3D printing really shines. So here, for example, this appliance was designed on a CAD software and then 3D printed, and we have the screw welded to the 3D printed part of the appliance, and then it was transferred and cemented intra-orally. Now let's discuss how 3D printing is used in orthodontics and its applications. So the first use, of course, would be uh, printing dental models. And of course, we can uh, either use an intraoral scanner and then we 3D, 3D print the models whenever we need them, or use a desktop uh, scanner. So we can save the model digitally, and whenever we need the model physically, we can 3D print it later on. Another application, of course, would be 3D printing a retainer, something like a vacuum retainer directly, where we can design the retainer virtually on the computer and then directly 3D printing the retainer. We can also 3D print any orthodontic appliance or any design that we have designed virtually on the computer. And of course, whenever we have an appliance like this one, we would use uh, uh, something like a saddle band, not a normal band because we cannot uh, go into proximally. So whatever we design on the CAD software, we can 3D print it and customize the appliance uh, to maximize the benefit for the patient. And of course, one of the most common applications for 3D printing is digital indirect bonding. And we have two techniques for digital indirect bonding. The one on the left, which is uh, we 3D print the model with the brackets after, of course, um, virtually putting the brackets on the model. And then we vacuum form a tray on this model. Or the other way, 
is that we design the tray virtually on the computer and then we directly 3D print the tray and we then place the brackets into the tray. And then come aligners, where 3D printing is an essential element in the production of aligners. So of course, the aligners process starts with scanning the patient's dentition. And then we send this scan to the aligner software where we move the teeth, we create uh, the treatment plan, we add the attachments, and then we 3D print each step separately in a different model. And then we use these models to create the aligners or we uh, pressure form the sheet uh, on the 3D printed model. And then we trim the aligner and finish it and we send it to the patients. Recently, some companies have created the resin materials that are clear and biocompatible, so it enabled us to directly 3D print the aligners. So we skipped the part where we have to 3D print the models and then we pressure form the sheets onto the models. Now the aligners can be directly 3D printed. And of course, this is uh, still something relatively new. So we are still gonna uh, wait for some research on this topic to see whether it's effective or not. As we said before, the greatest strength for 3D printing is that we can create custom designs. So uh, I have a previous video, uh, I'll put the link in the description, uh, it shows how we can create a shell on the teeth using Mesh Mixer, which is a free 3 editing software, 3D editing software. And, um, and then later on, I 3D printed using an FDM printer. You can also 3D print brackets. So here, here this bracket is printed um, um, on a large scale. This, this one is just for demonstration, of course. This one was printed using PLA, and we can use this one for uh, teaching purposes. However, some companies have developed 3D printable brackets that you can use intraorally. Uh, braces on demand, light force are both uh, provide brackets that are 3D printable. And of course, again, the greatest advantage of these brackets is that you can customize everything. You can even customize the bracket prescription. You can also 3D print uh, occlusal splints that you can create virtually on the computer and you can even check them on a, a virtual articulator and then you uh, 3D print the occlusal splint using clear resin. Finally, we can use 3D printing to print a guiding template for mini screws. There are, of course, multiple articles about guides for implants and guides for mini screws. And here, uh, CBCT was used to visualize the teeth and plan where the mini screw should be uh, inserted. And then a guide is designed on the computer, which is later uh, 3D printed and used intraorally. So that was everything today. So uh, I really hope you liked this presentation. Uh, if you do, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in another video.